Hey everyone, welcome back. It's the Electrical Code Coach here. We hadn't seen each other face to face in a while, so I wanted to stop in and say hello. And today I want to talk to you about the number one thing that I am looking for an electrician when I hire or if you know I'm coaching somebody who's hiring somebody. The number one thing that you want to do if you want to be an ideal hire candidate, an ideal electrician, an ideal lead man, or an ideal right hand man is the number one thing that I'm looking for is someone who is willing to call when they don't know what they're doing. It scares me when I have electricians that don't call or they're out on a complex job and I, you can hear it when they're either getting conveyed the job by the project manager. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Maybe you don't got it. And even at my level, I still call. Now, as you get higher in the game, I call up. Just like you will. You'll call up. You won't call down. Don't call someone who knows less than what you know the person that you could call knows. You call up, and you call higher and higher the higher you get in the game. But it's one of those things that I am looking for in an interview. It's one of the things that I'm looking for when we first start hiring and working with someone is that do they know when they don't know what they don't know? And one of my favorite ways to say it is I put it like this in the interview. I don't care what you do know. I care what you don't know. And the more importantly, I care when you know that you don't know and that you're willing to call. And I always try to phrase it like this. So, you know, I'll be in an interview with someone and I'll say, so tell me, you know, about, and I let them, you know, tell me about stuff. And I say, so if I put you on a panel change with a phone, you could get it done. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could get it done. And I always gauge their response. I want to know if they're going to be willing to call. That is the number one characteristic that I'm looking for in someone is someone who can call. The last thing I want is you to know it all or you to go out there and assume because assuming is not good. We all know what assuming does. And we don't want to assume anything ever in business, especially in electrical. It's very expensive. It's very costly. Oh, I thought I could use this type of box. Well, you can't. I thought I could use this type of fitting. Well, you can't. I didn't know you had to use a Myers hub. Well, you have to. And it, you know, when you're you know in those certain situations, and it gets very expensive. And the most dangerous, costly, frustrating thing out there is when there's an electrician who just thinks he knows. You may not know. And what's so funny is the more skilled they are, the more cautious they are. They may not call as often, but they're cautious when they're out on the job. They use their other colleagues while they're out on the job, and they're just cautious about what they're doing. They're saying, hey, now, let me look at this installation for just a minute. Because you get out there, you get in the middle of the job, you get to rocking and rolling. You can forget the simple things. You forget the basics, but remember the complex. But the basics are the expensive things. I forgot this bushing. I forgot this fitting. And it's just one of those things that you just slow down, take your time, make a phone call if you have to. I make phone calls every single day. Now, the things that I'm calling about now in my estimating position is I'm calling about you know huge code things or um, large financial things that could change a job you know completely. Sometimes I call about really basic stuff. Hey, I forgot this and I can't find it in the code. Would you help me? And you'll find that if you position yourself in your industry and if you position yourself with your inspectors and colleagues, you can pick up the phone and call them and ask them questions. Now, if you position yourself like you know it all or that you're the man or you've got it going on and nobody else does, uh, those phone calls get a lot harder to make. Uh, you know, you'll, you can get to yourself in a position where I've got inspectors I could call at 11 o'clock at night and they'd help me work through something in the code or colleagues I could call at 11 o'clock at night and they'd pick up my phone where they might not pick up 10 other people who might call. And I'm not saying anything about myself. I'm just saying what's out there and what's available. And what is available for you is that you can get to a point in your career where you can call really skilled people. You can call really high up people and they will help you on a higher level. And also at the same time, always before you call someone higher, you need to go through the hierarchy of your business that you're in. So if you have a project manager, call your project manager first. If he doesn't know or you feel uneasy about the answer, then you would call up from there inside your company. Don't call me trying to prove your boss wrong. That's I'm not into that. I'm here to help you. You can email me anytime. A lot of you have my phone number. You can call me. But don't call me trying to prove something to your project manager. If you feel like something's wrong, take a minute. Explain it to them first. If that doesn't work, explain it to their boss or the owner, or however large the company is, your foreman or the next person up, and say, hey, I still feel like this isn't right. I don't feel comfortable installing it. Can you, can you please help me? Or I just feel like something's missing here. So don't ever assume 
you know, that it, it is right. Even a set of plans, even a set of drawings. Don't ever assume that it's right. Always question and always be willing to ask the question. And the number one characteristic that I look for in a good electrician is that they are willing to call when they're not 100% positive that it's code compliant and that it's a correct installation for the area that they're in. And if you can't do that, you're never going to cut it with me. You're never going to cut it with anybody. You're always going to kind of be a joke. Um, and you'll turn into a joke of the guy who installed 15 disconnects and didn't know he needed a Myers hub on 15 disconnects because he knew it all. And those things are hard to live down. And I hope that that never happens to you on that scale. But I'm sure there's some guys that would be willing to admit in the comments below that they got ahead of the game and that they, you know, they, they've done some things. And I could tell you some stories where I've made mistakes. Um, typically, it's for myself, so I just ate it. But it's just one of those things that when you do make a mistake, and I'll share one with you I made this week. Um, and I had to call in some favors. So went out on a job, and I'll be honest with you, um, and we don't ever talk about anybody, and we love everybody, but we went in this home, and it was, uh, there were dead animals perhaps inside of it, also lots of animals living inside of it. Uh, there was no running water, and they were still using the bathroom. So it was a very, very bad situation, but we went in. I even took my shoes off, went in, walked through the house. Um, we end up getting the job, but I really didn't think we were going to be doing the job, and that's, you know, something that you learn not to do is never assume that you're not going to get the job. So I went through with the quote like normal, went out and shot my normal video, and I didn't catch that there was, um, and, and from the angle I was at, you couldn't really see it, but my panel box that we were wanting to tap off of, they were changing a feeder from one mobile home to another. So we're going to disconnect it. We're going to keep the same meter disconnect combo, but it's not going to feed this mobile home, and now it's going to feed this mobile home. And I didn't see that there was a shed blocking some of my workspace. And we ended up having to move it. And thankfully, it didn't cost us any more money because it made more sense to move it for the piping situation. It would have took them four hours to try to figure out how to pipe around that thing. And I don't know how you'd have swept two and a half inch 90s in there and made it work. They would have had quite the crisis to do that um, because it ended up being where that meter disconnect the the utility side was on the side that we wanted to come in on. And I don't catch everything during an estimate. I just make sure they have a big enough budget to do it. And then we have project managers and we have great electricians and they go out and make it work. I just make sure they have a good enough budget. And on this one, thankfully, we quoted it really high just to make sure that we had plenty of budget and we're still going to come in way under budget. But long story short, the reason I say that, I had to get on the phone. The panel had to be moved. We did not schedule a disconnect because we had a disconnect, right? We didn't need the utility company. So I had to get on the phone. And the first thing I said, I called as high as I could call in that utility company. And I said, I've goofed up. I said, I made a mistake. I was out on an estimate. I didn't think we were going to get the job. I didn't notice something. I know it's super short notice, but could you help me? And sure enough, he ended up calling me back and helping me. So he called me in that favor. They got somebody out there that day to disconnect it and out there that day to reconnect it, which was huge. At the same time, we hadn't scheduled our inspection yet because we weren't going to be done yet. Um, and this inspector only inspects a couple days a week, so we were going to call it in the next Monday and just be done with the whole project. So with that being said, I had to call the inspector because I had to get the power turned back on. Now, I could have called in the favor and got the power turned back on without the inspector, and it's state law in our area, don't get me wrong. I have seven days to get it inspected, but I would rather have the inspector come that day just for liability purposes, especially with the situation that we were in. So, with that being said, I had to call in a favor with the inspector. First, word, and he was he didn't have to answer my phone call, period. Uh, usually, a lot of times when they're out of the office, they won't answer anybody's phone call. But I put in a voicemail, and I said, I've goofed up. I said, uh, I, we were on a job that we didn't need a disconnect, now we do. Is there any way that you could squeeze me in? And he called me back, and he said, yes, I'll squeeze you in. I said, I said, you know, I explained everything to him. I said, I said, how do you like that? He said, I don't like it at all. And he's just giving me a hard time. But he said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Went over there, inspected our ditch, inspected the power, got the power back on. This was at like 1130, maybe 12, when we found out that we needed power pulled. And they got it back on by, by quitting time. The boys didn't have to stay late, you know, for that reason anyway. So just don't ever assume, and, and this is how I've started dealing with problems, whether it's a problem with uh, one of the code coaches on my website, whether it's a problem that I have in the field, assume that you're wrong and then get busy trying to find out whether you are or not. Assume it's your fault. Oh, it's my fault. Well, how did I goof up? You're going to make mistakes. You're going to goof up. But when where you don't want to position yourself 
And these two examples are perfect. If I would have positioned myself to this engineer at the power company, or if I would have positioned myself to this inspector, neither one of them would have took my phone call in the middle of the day. And neither one of them would have pulled strings for me to get this done and get the power back on in the same day. So, but you know, when it's all about being humble and saying, hey, I goofed up this time. That's something I, did, I didn't catch it. I didn't see it. And uh, it, it's my fault. To just, you know, take the buck stops here mentality and say, listen, this is my fault. I shouldn't have let it happen. I did let it happen. And, you know, what can we do to fix it? But if I would have came either arrogantly in the past to them, like I knew it all, or would have ever positioned myself like I knew it all, I would have never been able to get this done. And I just use this as a good example of, of a goof up of mine. You're going to goof up. You're going to make mistakes. Fix them if you do find them. If you do screw something up, say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I didn't put that fitting on. I can't believe I didn't put that bushing on. Let me run out there. I'll run out there right now and fix it. And just fix it. You know, just, just have that mentality that you're going to be always willing to fix it. So hopefully this uh, goof up of mine can help you a little bit to just, you know, be humble, be focused. Uh, try not to miss anything on the job. I guarantee you I'll never miss another workspace. And that was the first workspace issue that I think I've ever missed. And I don't know if I just didn't have it in my, I, I really didn't feel like we are and this is not an excuse, but I really didn't feel like we were going to get the job, which was mistake number one. And for two, I should have took more time while I was out there at the pole, really hooking it in. With us not having to disconnect power, I wasn't as focused on you know, that aspect of it. I'm like, oh, we're leaving that disconnect there. We'll just pop out of this disconnect. Boom, boom, boom. Well, sure enough, it was, it was, thankfully it didn't cost us anything, but it did cost me a favor. I hate to call in favors, right? So it's just one of those things that I want you guys to be aware of that you're going to make mistakes. The biggest thing is to call on the front end, pay attention on the front end. I guarantee I never, well, I guarantee you, I most likely am not going to be making any workspace, um, errors in the near future. So I hope that you guys are getting value from the channel. I pray that you will take that value and add value to others. My bargain is that you'll take any value that I give you or add to you and you'll turn around and give it to others. And that's when you multiply your goodness. You can take your goodness and multiply it to other people who can multiply it to other people who can multiply it to other people. And ultimately, we can get that much closer to our Project Zero of seeing zero deaths associated with the use of electricity in the residential setting uh, by 2030. I hope you guys will join us with that. I hope you guys have a great day. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. And if there's anything that I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.